So we will start with setting the seeds, challenges and opportunities. And our first speaker is a professor of infectious disease here at Uppsala University. He's also an advisor of the advocacy organization REACT. Please welcome Professor Otto Kars. As for many other issues, antimicrobial resistance has to stand back during the COVID-19 pandemic and it's also been a time for reflection on why the issue is being so slowly acted upon and how we can move forward in a much stronger way based on the learnings from the current pandemic. Antimicrobials is a large family of medicines and I will limit this presentation here to bacterial infections and antibiotics and its effect on health systems. To setting the scene here, I would first like to share with you a quote from a colleague, and I'm sure that you all agree on this statement. And I'm sure that you also, like me, is frustrated why the global response to this crisis has been so slow. Already in 2001, WHO published a global strategy for containment of antimicrobial resistance, but it took 14 years until it was translated into concrete action. These, there are multiple reasons for this slow reaction, but in my mind there are a few main causes that are more important uh, than uh, others and that has acted as barriers for strong coordinated global response. Uh, they are unfortunately to some extent also valid today. First, we have a technical and semantic barrier as we are talking about AMR, antibiotic resistance, drug resistance which really is difficult to understand both for the public and policymakers and does not have a disease face to relate to. This uh, also has led to a lack of data on the magnitude of the problem including the health and economic burden particularly on the national level and particularly in low and middle income countries. Antibiotics resistance was simply not seen at that time as a true global issue. Thirdly, a significant barrier has been the self-deception that the pharmaceutical industry will always deliver new antibiotics so we can sweep the problem of resistance under the carpet, at least in the rich countries. Now we know that the major pharmaceutical companies are, for more than 30 years has not been able to develop a new antibiotic with a novel mechanism of action. And the scientific challenges are huge and the innovation model is broken and needs to be fundamentally reformed. The Global Action Plan spurred several important political initiatives. First of all, the landmark political declaration from the UN General Assembly in 2016, which led to the formation of the Interagency Coordination Group, which delivered recommendations to the Secretary General of the UN in 2019. And then just recently, uh, the One Health Leaders Group was inaugurated. So the world has not been inactive during the last years, but in fact there are numerous and well-founded recommendations and commitments, and there is no excuse, to, excuse today for non-acting and implementing them. Antibiotics are the cornerstones of all health systems and the fundaments of both basic and highly specialized medicine. These fundaments are now rapidly crumbling. We are relying on antibiotics for basic health care, for maternal and specialized ch child health, and for modern medicine. And on top of this pyramid is cancer. Uh, this is what is happening to a young girl with leukemia as described by her mother in a blog post at the CDC website. After successful chemotherapy she died from sepsis. I think we will see many more of th uh, these tragic cases. A study some years ago indicated that, several, that severe sepsis accounted for nearly 10% of all cancer deaths. Oncologists are becoming worried. In a UK survey, 72% believe that drug-resistant infections will make some cancer treatment obsolete within 10 years. Pediatricians are also becoming worried. REACT recently conducted a survey to more than five, 400 physicians treating newborn children. 79% of them reported an increase in trend in multi-resistant infections and 54% believed that antibiotic resistance was the top reason for treatment failure in neonatal sepsis. Connected to this survey, we also produced a short film and I will show a short clip from this film on how the situation is perceived by a doctor working in Nairobi, Kenya. The fact is, in a few years to come, everybody will be in a problem. 
because we will not be having a drugs that are responding to common infections. The doctors will not be having drugs to prescribe and treat to their patient because of a drug resistance. I mean, it, it, it's a disaster for everyone, and it's important for the policymakers to ensure that uh, the issues of antibiotic resistance is actually addressed as one of the cause of death in, uh, in every country. Clearly, antibiotic resistance is a true global problem where the burden disproportionately falls on the low- and middle-income countries, and we will need, where we need fundamental changes in how we look upon this uh, global precious resource. In the current model, we are pouring the life-saving antibiotics into a bucket full of holes, leading to irrational use of antibiotics and premature development of antibiotic resistance. One main, may, major driver for uh, irrational use is uh, the lack of rapid diagnostics tests, which is a challenge all over the world, but particularly in low-income country settings where uh, a wait-and-see strategy is not an option for a mother that may have walked for hours to come to the health center with the feverish child. There are also many uh, cultural beliefs and misperceptions that drives an unnecessary antibiotic use, and the current market model for antibiotic research and development <coughs> is building on volume sales and must be replaced by a needs-driven model if we will have sustain, uh, sustainable use of antibiotics in the future. If we do believe that antibiotic effectiveness, effectiveness is a global public good, we must reflect on how this resource has been distributed and is distributed globally. There are numerous examples of excess use, not the least in high-income countries, where up to 50-60% is considered unnecessary. And high-income countries need to take a much stronger responsibility and lead by example. Lack of access is an enormous problem in low-income settings, where patients uh, that require antibiotics for, for treatment of, of, of uh, important uh, infections like pneumonia uh, have no access. So we simply need to move this circus together to preserve this global resource and, and, and use it in, in an equitable way over the globe. COVID-19 has shown the whole world the importance of strong health systems. And in record time, Global data were available on cases and deaths. There was a common understanding of this disease and how it spreads. We had rapid diagnostic tests and also, on not, not perfect, although not perfect, the global collaboration to increase access to new technologies. We are far from that uh, uh, with antibiotic resistance, but we certainly could learn from what has happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. I think we should move away from uh, the narrative on fighting AMR and superbugs uh, and move to a common mission that everyone could work together to fulfill. And that mission could be sustainable access to effective antibiotics in all health systems. For that to happen, uh, we need a, a lot of action uh, on all levels in all countries. Prevention is key, for sure, from nutrition and basic sanitation, but also uh, infection prevention and control in hospitals and access to clean water and soap and, and hand washing, which is not the case in many of the low-income countries today. Data generation I already alluded to previous times. Uh, pre uh, previously, uh, we need data to support action, to understand uh, how intervention is functioning, to guide uh, prescribers, to guide regulators, and to, and to convince policymakers of the magnitude of the problem. Awareness and behavioral change is key to convince everyone in society, from, from uh, the individual patient uh, and, and, and consumer, to school children, uh, healthcare workers, policymakers, uh, and so forth. Uh, all of us need to change behavior. All of us need to understand what is at stake. And the narrative, of course, we need to be targeted differently towards those different stakeholders. Access and conservation is key. We need to have a system where access is available for all in need but we still need to conserve these precious drugs as much as possible. And that balance is not easy, but it needs to happen. Uh, this, is, this is a huge uh, burden on all governments. 
It needs political leadership and coordination, and it needs, for sure, human resources. Sustainable access to effective antibiotics is not only a national responsibility. There are at least two global functions that need to come in place. One is to support countries in, uh, in low-income countries specifically uh, with capacity building for implementation of the national action plans. This is extremely important to get these, these uh, plans from paper to, to action. The other is uh, that we need a global function, a true global collaborative model for R&D, not only on antibiotics, but also for diagnostics and vaccines. And this model needs to build on uh, equitable and affordable access for all. But of course, uh, although it's a health issue in its core, uh, it's much broader than that. And moving science to policy requires a clear interdisciplinary approach where many actors need to be involved. Uh, and not the least, social and behavioral sciences need to come much stronger into this. Might uh, the uh, uh, proposed inter, uh, independent evidence panel uh, on IMR be uh, a host uh, of this kind of collaboration in the future? Perhaps it could be. Lastly, I will end uh, with another quote from some colleagues uh, recently published on solidarity and universal preparedness for health after COVID-19. Universal preparedness for health is a cross-sectoral challenge that extends far beyond the healthcare sector. And to the right, the pandemic should unite the entire global community to build societal resilience to cope with the next crisis. In fact, the next crisis is already here. Antibiotic resistance is not a coming pandemic. It's really an ongoing pandemic since decades back. We need to realize that this crisis is an urgent one and we know what to do, and we simply just have to act uh, on it now. Thank you, Professor Otto Kars here from Uppsala University.